The picture on top of the book is a photograph I took, which you're not allowed to take. And, and uh, uh, it, it, there is a chapel in Oxford where there's a huge wall with this carving. And it says, Sir William Jones and the Pandits. And I, when I saw it, I just said, my God, I got to take a picture of this. So more than 15 years ago, I knew one day I'll use it. So it took me many visits and tried to smuggle a camera through this fellow, that fellow, but you know, finally we got the picture. Details will not be disclosed. <laughs> now this picture, William Jones was the Supreme Court judge of, uh, of, uh, in Calcutta, the Supreme Court of India, which was set up by the East India Company. So imagine East India Company set up something called the Supreme Court of India. Which East India, it's like, you know, some uh, Microsoft goes and set up the Supreme Court of Mexico, something like that. Is, or maybe Trump would do that. Yeah. <laughs> set up a, their Supreme Court and put their, your man and say, okay, we are going to adjudicate cases. So this is the judge of the Supreme Court. Now they had a clever idea. He said that, you know, we should, we should let the Hindus think that we are adjudicating according to their own laws. Then they will think that we are doing the right thing. So he, want, he came up with something, he uh, compiled a group of pandits and basically to create a book of Hindu laws which would fit his idea. So first he created, uh, his predecessor actually had done that, it didn't work, had too many uh, obvious errors in it. So he said, I'm going to translate the Manusmriti myself. So you know how long it takes to learn Sanskrit, you guys know, and then to master Manusmriti. But he claimed from the time he arrived in India, he claimed in two years, he had created the Hindu laws by translating Manusmriti. He claimed that. that and he, uh, he, in this, he says, uh, the caption here he says, a uh, caption written under this carving says, he gave the Hindus their laws. So he was called the, just, he called himself the Justinian of India. Justinian meaning the Roman emperor who gave the Roman laws, made the laws of the Roman people. So he is the one who is sort of the founding father of Indian having, Hindus having laws. We didn't have, we were lawless people, we didn't even know. And so we should be grateful to him. So the strange thing is, he's shown on a throne, dictating, and a bunch of pandits sitting on the floor, looking dazed and learning from him and taking his dictation and confused. So it's sort of like, uh, you know, he's a, he's, a big he's a big shot and talking down at them. And, you know, and the caption, he gave the Hindus their laws. This is the kind of thing. So the reason I put it there is I explain inside that 200 years later, the British has been replaced by the Americans. And if we were to do a similar equivalent thing for Sheldon Pollock, it would say he gave the Hindus their human rights. Means because he's trying to teach this liberation philology is, I'll tell you, uh, political philology is I'll tell you what's wrong, and liberation philology I'll tell you how to fix it. So he's into the human rights business. But there would not be pandits sitting on the floor. He himself would be dressed as a pandit. And sitting around the table would be billionaires writing checks to pandits. So that's, the, that's how the old image uh, has shifted to a modern image.